wild times. Dude, Dude speaking disgusting. of dysentery, by the way, did you guys hear about the big outbreak of dysentery on the TV show? What, what, what TV, TV show? show? Okay, so they're making a big, <laughs> uh, uh, like an American Ninja Warrior um, style game show that's slip and slide themed. It's called like <laughs> wait, Ultimate wait, wait, Slip and Slide. I'm going to come back to ranting about TV problems, but yeah. I feel like you'd fit right in on that show for us, to be honest. I love slip and slides, but please continue. It's freaking out of a super fun. So, yeah, so they built this massive, you know, big, like, NBC style, I don't remember which network it is, thing for people to play these slip and slide based games. Everyone got fucking dysentery. So the crew. So there's something disgusting in the water. Amoebic dysentery. Horse yeah. knows about that. Forty-five <laughs> people, I think, got dysentery Jesus. and had to shut down production. Wait, so That's if you insane. catch if you catch dysentery quick enough, it's is it it's not as debilitating as what Forrest went through. Is well, that it took Forrest. It took you a year to get diagnosed, right? Like correct. once you yeah. were diagnosed, you got squared away in a couple weeks. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, no, it's awful. I know all about Ugh. it. Stuff's coming out both ends. You don't sleep. There's blood you die. places it shouldn't be. Yeah, no, it's According not to Oregon Trail, which I played much of when I was a child, you <laughs> die from dysentery <laughs> well, regularly. Well, back then, they didn't have things like bags of IVs to keep themselves hydrated and stuff Correct. like that. Fair Obviously, enough. with modern medicine, it shouldn't <laughs> kill you. Have you ever yeah. had Giardia? Uh, I don't know if I've had Giardia or not. I mean, it's very okay. common. You can pass it through your system without treatment. Um, I've had Bilhazia, which is the African equivalent of of Giardia, which a lot of kids get, and it basically just makes you sleepy and lethargic, and you get it from Sounds freshwater great. snails. Um, no, oh. it's not great, and you you, <laughs> you you don't feel well at all. And uh, what's funny is, so in, in Zimbabwe, where I grew up, it seems like kids always have Bilhazia, because like twice a year you take the pill, and I'm blanking on the damn name of it now, and then you take it, and like three days later, you're like, wow, I feel great. So it's like this slow decline where this this thing is eating away at your your liver and you don't really know about Ugh. it. And then you take the pill and Ugh. feel better and everybody picks it up in the next six months. And then you take the pill again and you feel better. That's just life. Oh, yucky. <laughs> Terrible. Um, by the way, did you know it's caused by parasitic worms that, are, that I think Ugh. live inside these snails? So the freshwater snails carry the infectious worm yeah, that then gets inside you. <laughs> But Ugh, you, it's so you, gross. Yeah, it sounds you, you, awful. There's, you know, it's like going in any creek anywhere, a river anywhere. There's snails everywhere, so you're not. There's no way to avoid contact with it. I don't think. But I don't know. We, whatever. We're all dude. Still what here. was what was that snail that you pointed out to the crew in Louisiana? And we're like, do not touch this fucking thing. Oh, the apple snails that are in, invasive. But it's not the snails themselves that are the problem. So the apple snails are vectors for rat lungworm. Okay. This is this is kind of a complex thing. I'll try and explain it all as simply as I can. Such is life, my friend. Very complex. Basically, so basically, so we brought rats in, right? Rats aren't like just around. They've spread with humans, and that's how the plague spread and everything else. Anyway, mm-hmm. sure. rats carry a lungworm, a parasitic lungworm that lives their entire life cycle in their lungs, and uh, I don't think it actually affects the rats, but I could be wrong. Anyway, when they, you know, it does their life cycle and the rats puke it up or shit it out or whatever, and f- the rat feces fall into the water. Well, this is fine. It shouldn't affect humans, except we introduced apple snails, which are those big snails that we saw laying those pink eggs in Louisiana, Patrick. Apple yep. snails run over the rat feces or go in the water where the rat feces are, whatever. I'm not actually sure how they transmit it. The rat lungworm, the parasite, gets into these apple snails. And what we figured out is people touch these apple snails, put it in your mouth, whatever, put it by your eyeballs, get in a cut. The rat lungworm parasite goes into your system. You're not a rat, so it doesn't know where to go. And instead of going into your (laughs) lungs, it goes into your brain and drives you crazy. And there is zero cure for it and you die. And so oh it's, a, Fantastic. it's this weird cyclical thing with the, the snails and the rats and the parasite and affecting humans, and there's nothing we can do to fight it, except I mean, not touch the stupid snails. Except based for kill on, those snails. Based on Bill Harzia and, and rat lungworm, would you, would you pretty much just recommend that if the, your average Joe finds himself in a survival situation just to avoid eating snails? Oh, my God, we should rant on this for a while because <laughs> I used to, I, you know, I did the Naked and Afraid. We all know that. I look like a potato. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, uh, so I used to keep up with it for a while, and every 
freaking moron on that show is like, I'm out here in the jungle and I found these snails and I'm going to cook them and eat them. I'm like, put the fucking snails down. Like nothing carries more parasites than snails. And you have all these idiots that are from like South Florida. So they've eaten a periwinkle or something like that, which is delicious. And they're like, I can eat this jungle snail in Borneo. And I'm like, no, you cannot. Do not touch that jungle (laughs) snail. Like you are going to die. Can I chime in? Let me chime in here for a moment. Forrest. You ate an undercooked freshwater crab and got dysentery. That's all I'm saying. Who you can't be telling people? No, case in point. I was young. I was stupid. That's why I I, used to listen to you. Do as I say, not as I do. That is my (laughs) motto. That's what I will raise my children on. Don't just like (laughs) just don't don't no bad shellfish crustaceans. If you don't know exactly what they are, you should not be chowing on them. Good to know. I learn a lot on this podcast. It's probably going to save my life one day. Well, because. You know, snails are a delicacy, right? Escargot, right. you got a little fucking delicious. garlic butter on top. They're oh. delicious. So I could see being Forget real hungry and being like, I'm going to chow these snails. Yeah, it's Dude, bad. Oh, when it's I bad. used to Saltwater work on snails that. are okay, but freshwater I, snails carry all kinds of nastiness. Okay. I, I used to work Good on man. a farm, and uh, I would sort through the corn. It was fresh picked every day. And my job was to sort it and get rid of like the small and shitty or non inedible corn. And they, some of the corn had fucking cancer. And it was this disgusting mass oh, the, of like. The black. You're talking about that yeah. black. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Go so, on. We're going to talk about this in a so minute. So that is, it's obviously disgusting. And it's a delicacy. I forget which country yes, they eat it. I was it. just about you to know, talk about that. Yeah. It's like their thing that they eat. And uh, one day I tried it and it was fucking appalling. And I was just like, man, like. Taste is is very fucking subjective and has to do with like what you're used to. You know, it's 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 fucking sure. strange. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to that find a- it's it's a it's a it's a fungus that grows on the corn. Um, I'm trying to find the name of it. I'm googling it furiously. Here it is. I was I was looking also and I couldn't find it because there's a bunch of conspiracy theories about how GMO <laughs> corn is causing humans to get cancer. Oh great. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. You yeah, no, if you type in corn. corn fungus food, uh, the co- name that comes up is corn smut, but I've heard it called oh, something else. Oh, yeah, corn else. smut. Yeah, yeah corn that's smut. what we called it. And yeah. uh, I've seen it. So my, my forager buddy, Brian, who I do stuff with, he eats everything and anything that's wild that he can figure out. And he actually started growing the stuff on corn to eat it um, and sell it for thousands of dollars to high-end Mexican chefs in San Francisco. Um yeah, I have never I mean, eaten it, but I've heard it's delicious, so I really don't know. It but was, you thought it was gross, Peter? I did not like it. I mean, of course, I tried it raw. It's not like I was uh, cooking some kind of delicacy. I just fucking ate it while I was... It uh, looks like brains. Yeah, There it is. There it looks like brains. It looks, it looks like pebbles, honestly. It looks like stones. Yeah, like it does, rocks. yeah. Ew. Yeah. Corn, corn smut. smut. <laughs> Would you eat it? Roasters corn weigh smut. in. Well, I'm definitely curious if you do. I definitely eat it. I think it's interesting. I'd eat it now as an adult. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, here's something like else that we now. don't consider, right? Uh, have you ever had? A, have you guys ever heard of a lobster mushroom? Peter, well, you got this up. Just Google lobster mushroom real quick, and I'm God knows what lobster we're going to see. Lobster mushroom. Yeah. So a lobster Kay. mushroom is a parasitic fungus that attacks a coral mushroom, which is another species of mushroom, and causes it to mutate and turn red into what you're seeing right here. So this Mm -hmm. is literally just a different species of mushroom that has been attacked by a fungus uh, that has mutated it to give it this red color, and it is the most delicious thing that grows out of the ground. I mean, there's a reason it's called a lobster mushroom. It tastes like you're eating a lobster steak that you've picked out of the ground, and that is from some weird parasitic fungus that's turned the mushroom into that. That's cool looking, Good man. to know, because I feel like if I saw delicious. that, if I saw that thing, like, in a situation where I was really hungry, I would be like, that's poison. <laughs> it looks, it kind of looks like a, like a, uh, a, like a squash of some type. Yeah, gourd. Dude, they're, they're, now, do they're the pennies awesome. grow and they're big, on it? Like you, or oh, yeah, you can kind of see there. there, but they get big. <laughs> like, they get, you know, bigger than a tennis ball. Like, they get pretty solid in size. So you pick a basket of those. Hit them with a little olive oil, slice them, throw them on the grill. Forget about it. Forrest. Got a br- um, oh, go ahead. Go Sorry. Ahead. Go ahead, Peter. Oh, no. I was just going to say um, we, uh, we're coming out to Santa Barbara uh, yep. because you are. The, the, the new stewed. Last time we were out there, you cooked us some of your delicious foraged morsels. And I saw, and you talked about, all of the stuff you foraged recently. Are you going to be feeding us? 
Uh, in July 3rd, no. It's been a terrible dry and drought year this year, so the foraging has been garbage. But let I me, did shoot a few yeah. fish last week, or two weeks ago, so we'll, uh, we'll have some fresh fish to eat. Well, let me ask you this real quick. Yeah. What do you feed your dog besides your own dick? <laughs> You're so obsessed with your message, with your, with your voice drops. Wild times. So if you want more behind-the-scenes stuff, stuff that we cannot show on YouTube, Darwin Awards, video breakdowns and reviews, check out the Patreon. It's full of hours and hours of incredible exclusive content, stuff that you guys are going to love. Swipe up, click the link, do the thing, come and hang out on Patreon. See you guys there.